everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to mark your 15 inch universal hat and scarf loom, the half inch gauge, for the fingerless glove patterns that I've got available on premiumknittingloops.com. Now the yarn I am using for these gloves, it's the unique. This is some of my current favorite yarn. I absolutely love this. This is in Circus. It's just a really fun yarn. Now, if you're wanting to do the fingerless gloves on this loom, you're going to start your black peg and you'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's when you start marking. So we got green, purple, blue, green, purple, blue. So one, two, three. Well, actually, we'll count the black one as one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So number nine green, purple, blue, green, purple, blue, white peg. Blue, purple, green, blue, purple, green. Flip it over to the other side. Count the same. Green, purple, blue, green, purple, blue, empty peg. Blue, purple, green, blue, purple, green. What this does is this marks off the different sizes. The green is for small, purple is for medium, blue is for large. Now, if you already have this loom and you're just going to mark the pegs out, what you'll need, you can use the one peg wedge or you can use the two peg wedge. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it with the two peg wedge, which I'll show you how to do both. But you will need at least three double peg wedges. Um, you may want four. I suggest four because then if you want to have the way the gloves go at one point, you have, you start at the top, you'll have this part done, and then you'll need to add the thumb. So when you do that part, you'll actually have two wedges in for one glove at the same time. So that way, if you are working on two gloves at one time, you will have enough wedges. So I suggest four double peg wedges for this. Now I'll go ahead and kind of walk you through. I'm not going to give all the exact dimensions because the pattern is available on premium knitting looms but I do want to show you something with this yarn I did one skein this is what I have left and as you can see the gloves I do they're backwards on the loom so when they're inside out taken off the loom and flipped inside out you'll be able to see but the collar stripes opposite so there are two ways you can get around this you can buy two skeins of the yarn and do two sets of gloves and then just match up the ones that go together or you can do your one glove and then for this one what I would have wanted to do as you can see the way it stripes if I would have done my one glove and then just balled all my yarn up to where I would have been starting with the end then it would have matched up a lot better I would have had the green at the top and it would have went down. But this is actually a lot of green so I wouldn't have needed all of it. But you can do that. I honestly prefer to just do two sets of gloves. I have these sell so fast when I do events. And so I usually will just keep making them until I have enough for a couple matching sets. And then I'll go and I'll do a few more in a different size or something like that. Now one difference is... If you want to just convert your patterns to the double peg wedge, it's simple. You just put the double peg wedge in there and use it instead. Uh, the only big difference is on this decrease right here, where on the when you're decreasing on the single peg wedge, you take the yarn from these pegs and you'll move them to these pegs. In this situation, you'd take the yarn from these pegs and you move them. Well, you take the yarn from these pegs and you move them to these pegs and then you move your wedge back. And if you do it that way, this is how the thumb will look. Um, I'm going to do some doing it the other way where just the same way as you do the other, where you take the yarn from these pegs and move to these instead of moving them to these. And I'll show you how that looks as well. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, but how you will use this, which as I said, I'll kind of go, which I need to make you know, another set of gloves because I need a match for this one. I need a match for that one. 
which I am going, let me find my center pool. Let's see what color this one starts with. Okay, this one is starting, uh, if I can find the, okay, this one is starting with this color, so I don't really want to start with that one. I'll go ahead and use up my green here. Do a chain cast on. All the way around. Which will just take me a minute to do this. So I'm just going to do the whole cast on while in this one clip. I am a big fan of the chain cast on. It has a nice stretch to it. It has a good looking uh, finished edge to it that I really like. all the way around which I am making a glove a medium sized glove which fits me perfectly uh, actually I could put this one on and show you see how it fits and how it contours but there's like the big difference you can see how that looks but this size fits my hands absolutely perfect uh, the small would be for a kid which if you're wanting to do them for a kid you just you'd want to shorten the rows between the thumb here so you wouldn't want to do as many rows right here and you probably wouldn't need your cuff as long either all right almost there now when you get back around I just take that loop and put on that first peg that connects everything and then you'll push everything down our first five rows oops I got stuck first five rows are going to be garter stitch so we will e wrap a row purl a row e wrap a row purl a row e wrap a row then you will purl five rows so you're going to do ten rows on this little spot first five garter stitch last five purl do that and then I'll show you where to go from there first five rows of garter stitch are done and five rows of pearl stitch after it this is what it looks like this is going to want to kind of flip it inside out and that's fine just once it gets long enough to where you can push it through the bottom just push it down through and then it will stay down there okay so at this point we need to move this so you're going to take the yarn off those pegs oops and move them over take the yarn off this one this was your last stitch, so that one's going to be loose, but you can take it off and then tighten it up. Kind of push those down just so they're out of the way. Now this peg was in there like this. We want to flip it the opposite direction so that the slits are facing the thumb section. We are done with what's on here so we're going to cut this if I can find where I placed my scissors okay cut that leave enough to weave in later and just pull that down through the middle all right now that's out of the way you'll be using we got to do the thumb part now this right here so we're going to be using two of these double pegged wedges one will be facing it'll be between the blue pegs right past the purple ones and it'll be facing the yarn now for our second one whatever size you're on you will mark that same size that same collar so it started with the purple so I'll mark the purple and then the blue just happens to be right after the purple okay so now we take our yarn and do another slip knot we're going to do another chain cast on here oh 
Hold on. Let me flip it this way. There we go. Do that again. Another chain cast on. Which is just a few pegs, so I'll do that. Okay. And we are going to chain this whole little, the little circle. We're going to go to the purple peg. Oh, sorry. Yarn's getting tangled. Okay. You want to make sure you go through both of these. Now, I find it easier if I pull the yarn through that purple because see that holds that in place. Then I can tighten it. There we go. And you're going to notice your pegs aren't exactly across from each other and that's just one of the side effects of doing a loom where they actually have the correct gauge all the way around so your on one side the gauge may not be exact so you can wiggle it a little bit I mean that's not going to hurt anything okay so push those down now we are going to do five rows of garter stitch on just this little circle. So we will e-wrap one row. We will purl the second row, e-wrap the third row, purl the fourth row, and end on an e-wrap. So okay, go ahead and get the now. five rows. There's my row counter. Five rows of garter stitch for the thumb dumb. Now we can actually get rid of this middle piece all you do is just pull up now this is the one the yarn is coming from so you can see it stretches which that's fine you put it on there and then you can tighten it up and now your yarn is coming from that blue peg oh, sorry okay now we take it from this one and you put the loop on the peg over here now this can just be wiggled out and you're done with this one the rest of the project is done with just the last loop with this one that's already in there all right so you can pull these back up the yarn is coming from this peg the yarn is coming from this peg now what you're going to do is you're going to purl eight rows but you're going to go all the way around this is what you're going to count when you get back to, well, this purple peg right here, that is row one. So you'll go all the way around. You do that blue one. The yarn will be in the same spot. That's one row. Do that until you have eight rows. And then we will start doing uh, the decrease for the thumb. Now I do want to show you. You're going to have four pegs with double loops on them. That's fine. You might find it easier, though, to take them off one at a time instead of trying to do like a normal purl and pick them both up and pull them both over. So go ahead and do okay, your Okay, we are at the decrease part for the wrist. Now I do want to show you, I made a second glove. So you can see there's two different ways you can do the decrease. And okay. Now this glove, as you can see, the decrease was done where the yarn from this peg was moved to this peg. The yarn from this peg was moved to this peg. It it kind of looks just bunched up and I, I'm not a big fan of it. Now this one, it blends in very nicely. I moved the yarn from this peg to this peg and this peg to this peg. Now I'm making a matching glove. These ones I'm making matching for so I'm gonna have to continue doing the wrists like this just so that they match up but I much prefer this one better because it almost it's almost seamless how it blends and I'll show you this one a little close up see that one's just kind of a bunchy mess so what you're going to want to do is take after you do your eight pegs take the loop from this peg and move it to this peg but just to keep up with the pattern, I gotta move it. Oh, I gotta move mine. 
to this middle. All right. Oh, I don't have the whole loop. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. I'm used to doing this with the loom in my lap, so I find it a little hard trying to move these. Now this can be moved, so you want to move it back so that it is in between two pegs down. Now what you're going to do is you're going to e-wrap, not e-wrap, I'm sorry, you're going to purl two rows. Your first row around, you will have, well for you, you will have double loops on your green pegs. Your second loop around, you won't. After you do your second loop, you're going to take the yarn from the green peg, add to the blue peg. The side yarn from the green peg, add to the blue peg. Take your two peg um, wedge and move it back so that it is in between the blue. And you're going to do that same pattern again until you get to where you're in between the purple pegs. So go ahead and do that now and then I'll show you how to do that. Okay, once you've done all the decreases to where you're back at those original purple pegs, then all you do is just purl until you get the body the length you want and finish up with five rows of garter stitch, which I've already done that much except for the cast off. Now for these ones, the body at the end of my decrease, the body to right before I start the garter stitch is about... 20 to 25 rows long that's typically what I do um, and then you have your garter your five rows of gar which e-wrap pearl e-wrap pearl e-wrap then you want to take the working yarn and wrap it around the pegs you're using around about three times and we're going to do our cast off which all the cast off is it is a super stretchy cast off. So the yarn right now is coming from this peg. So we're gonna skip this peg and go to that one. So you skip one peg, like you're doing a purl, pull it up, but instead just keep pulling it. Go back one peg and pull the yarn down. You're gonna skip a peg, pull the yarn up, go back one peg, pull the yarn down. Skip a peg, pull the yarn up, go back one peg and pull the yarn down. You do this until you get all the way around, oops, until you get all the way back to your first peg. Then you can just take everything off the loom, which I'll just show you on this one. And then your glove is done. At this point, I've already weaved in the ends through here. I still have this one right here to weave in, which I'll go ahead and do. Which all you do is you just take the end and bring it. For this one, I just bring it down through the garter stitch and then run it over a few just so that it's kind of out of the way. Then I just cut the excess string. But anytime you're weaving in ends before you cut, stretch it real good so that, and then still cut it about an inch, half inch, and then that tail will kind of wiggle itself in. And then it's really not gonna be that noticeable. If it pokes through the other side, you just push it back through. And you can flip your glove inside out. And it is done. Now this one right here, I do want to show you how these lined up. 
This one I made, looks like I made it about five rows longer. But um, this was done on the same, from the same skein. As you can see, it goes like this. That's just how the yarn striped. That's why I suggest you might want to do multiple gloves to uh, get matching sets. Now, if you like the yarn I used for this one, this is called Oasis. And it's still the Lion Brand Unique yarn. I really like this yarn. It looks nice. I don't have trouble with it, like, balling up real bad on me. It's just a very... Um, nice looking acrylic yarn so you can wash it dry and you're going to be fine all right well here I'll show you okay this one was done at I think 20 rows for the cuff this one was 25 this one must have been 30 so that gives you ideas for different lengths which I'll put the short one on and show you see my hand I've got this much room that will give you an idea of different lengths for the cuffs. Okay, I do hope this helps. Any questions or comments, please. Um, actually, I'll have my email address in the description below. And you can email me if you have any questions, comments, just leave it in the comment section. I do have various uh, fingerless glove patterns available on uh, Cindy Woodloom's website. Under, Of course, you look under my profile, Amanda Pratt, or you can look under just fingerless gloves um thank you so much for watching and again any questions don't forget to ask and don't forget to subscribe